Welcome to a new vlog. Today we are taking a closer look at this USB dummy load slash meter which I got in the previous mailbag video. We're going to see how it's built, what kind of functionality does it have and if it's accurate or not. So this uh, load is built with uh, three active PCBs as well as a fourth passive front panel. They are joined with these uh, brass standoffs and I think the standoffs act as circuit pads as well because uh, there are no wires between the different levels. And in order to uh, get the alignment right during the assembly, the designer of these PCBs made the corners on this side rounded while the ones on this side are diagonally cut and you can see these features along an entire side. This is a neat solution overall because it saves cost and as long as the screws are tight these should provide an adequate connection. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper, so it's definitely worth checking them out. I've taken it apart so we can take a better look at the parts they used. And starting with the front panel, it's just a PCB used as a front panel. And it has this extra acrylic protective layer for the LCD cutout. I like the fact that they gold plated these uh, PCBs, they look really nice and this is especially visible with an open construction. The next module is the USB meter and on this PCB we can start identifying some of the components. We have a bunch of USB connectors, the TFT LCD which is attached with some double sided tape, this is the Beacon 3231 which is a Bluetooth system on chip in charge of the Bluetooth connection this meter has. It's not a module on itself but rather the chip and its circuit implemented directly on this PCB. It's the first time I'm hearing about Beacon so this is probably cheaper than the Bluetooth modules we are used to seeing on AliExpress. Under the LCD panel which is attached with some double sided adhesive tape we have more components. This is our flex LCD connector. The brain of this USB meter which is the STM8S005 and next to it we have probably have something like a 3.3 volt linear regulator to power the microcontroller. Next to the output USB connector we have a shunt resistor and probably an amplifier for that signal. On the back of this PCB we have no components but we find some labels with the model and specs of this USB tester. Moving on to the dummy load level, it looks like maybe this was designed to be able to run standalone because I see a couple of USB connector footprints on here. Then right between the adjustment pods I see a single op-amp, the part number is LM321, so it's nothing special, just a jelly bean op-amp. On the back we have our main transistor which is a TIP122, this is a bipolar NPN Darlington transistor rated for 5 amps 100 volts. I'm surprised they did not use a MOSFET like all the other dummy loads we've seen so far, but who knows, maybe this way was cheaper. And we have another bit of circuitry on this PCB, we have an MC34063 which is a DC to DC converter chip and I believe on this module it could be used in a boost configuration to raise 5 volts from USB up to 12 volts which then might be used to power the op amp or the cooling fan if it's working on 12 volts. There is also a smaller linear regulator, a 6203. So uh, this one might be the actual chip supplying power to the op-amp to maintain a lower noise. Our third module is the one handling the wireless charging coil with Qi protocol compatibility. On one side we obvi obviously have the coil while on the other side we have some chips and the NU1618 is the main one here, it's handling the wireless charging. I could not find a datasheet for this chip but I found a PDF explaining an evaluation board and there was no particular mention of the Qi standard compatibility but it does have ASK and FSK bi-directional communication so whichever protocol it talks to it's all in the software because the chip also has a built-in 32-bit microcontroller. The other chip here is an AO4813 dual P MOSFET 
which is obviously needed to switch the two ends of the coil. Once again, this module appears to be designed to work standalone because we have a USB connector footprint on here. I've assembled the module back together so we can test a few things, but let's start from the specs. Its uh, measurement range goes from 4.5 up to 21 volts and from 0 to 2.8 amps with 10 millivolts and 1 milliamp resolution. Voltage measurement error is plus or minus 0.2% plus 1 unit. Current measurement is plus or minus 0.8% plus 3 units. I would assume that if you apply external power, the measurement range is extended down to 0 volts. While testing with the dummy load turned on, I observed the minimum current you can adjust is 0.08 amps, while the maximum is 2.92 amps. When you turn the load functionality off, the meter will show 0 amps, which is uh, true because it's only measuring its output, but you should know the meter itself is pulling about 23 milliamps, and that might vary with the brightness setting for the LCD. I've checked the accuracy of the voltage measurement with an external multimeter. Here are the results. It goes slightly beyond the specified error of plus or minus 0.2% in some occasions, but I think it's acceptable for this kind of instrument. You're not really going to use this for precise measurements of voltage. I've also checked the accuracy of the current measurement with an external ammeter, and here we take a base measurement to figure out the consumption of the meter itself, which in this case is 24 milliamps, then we'll use the relative function on the uh, multimeter to subtract this from future measurements because the USB meter does not measure its own consumption. For current measurements, the spec is plus or minus 0.8% plus 3 units and it does go outside spec up to 1.1% uh, plus uh, 3 units as you go up the range, but once again I think that's acceptable for this kind of meter. This meter comes with Bluetooth connectivity and so I've checked the app which by the way is the same app that works with the Ruideng USB meters. And what can I say, it does the job, it's easy to install, easy to connect, it provides all the data you can see on the meter LCD in the interface but you can view it all at once so it's nicer. You can even change the settings of the meter. It offers some data logging capability, you can export the uh, data recorded by right clicking on the graphs, so it does pretty much what you would expect, nothing special. And now to give you my final thoughts on this meter, let's start with the good stuff. I like the fact that you can test wireless chargers with this and I like the fact that it's a USB meter and a dummy load into one. It's nice that it has Bluetooth connectivity so you can leave it testing something on your bench and then log the results on your phone or computer. That's really nice. But there are also some negative things I've noticed like the listing on AliExpress uh, advertised quick charge protocol trigger but I see no option for that in the menu and it did not trigger while connected to a quick charge port. There is also no power delivery support on this, so it's basically just 5 volts over USB. Although it can measure up to 20 volts, there is nothing built in to trigger those voltages. The transistor is rated for 5 amps, but you can only discharge up to 2.9 amps. Uh, I would have liked to be able to go to a higher current, but uh, considering that this is supposed to test uh, USB ports, you don't really need more than 2.9 amps. However, the fan placement is not ideal either, so it would have probably overheated if they allowed more than 2.9 amps. If you need just the USB meter capability, then it's probably better to go for a Ruideng UM24C or UM25C like I have here, uh, because it's, it's a more capable and standalone USB meter. But if you need just the uh, USB dummy load functionality, then it's probably better to go for this uh, dummy load, uh, which I showed in uh, many previous videos. This can trigger on a quick charge protocol. It has built-in functionality for that. However, if you need a mix of uh, this USB meter and a dummy load into one, uh, you really need to go uh, after this, especially if you need the wireless test functionality, uh, then it's certain you need this newer model. As usual, there will be links for all of these uh, products in the description below the video, so check them out. 
If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal. More info on that in the link placed in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.